Cooper Cup just finished one of, if not the most impressive regular season campaign we've ever seen from a wide receiver. He became the fourth receiver to ever win a triple crown, which is where one player leads the league in receptions, yards, and touchdowns. He was less than 20 yards short of Calvin Johnson's receiving yards record. He was first in the league in yards per route run. I mean, in terms of both efficiency and volume, there aren't many seasons that stack up with this one. Usually, when a receiver puts up such wild numbers, we can see why. When Calvin Johnson broke the record back in 2012, it wasn't even that surprising because the dude is 6'5", ran a 4'3", and could win a jump ball in triple coverage. When we see Devontae Adams or Justin Jefferson consistently putting defensive backs on skates with sharp routes, it's easy to understand why they go for over 1,300 yards in back-to-back -back seasons. With Cooper Cup, though, it's a different story. In a position dominated by some of the best athletes in the world, Cup should have no business outperforming everyone, but he is. This enigmatic reality has sparked narratives like he's being carried by Matt Stafford and Sean McVay, or he racks up so many yards because he aligns in the slot. So today I want you to put those narratives aside and appreciate Cooper Cup's season for what it was, because we may not see another one like it for a very long time. In today's passing league, the vast majority of teams base out of 11 personnel on offense, which puts one running back, one tight end, and three receivers on the field. Back when two receiver sets were the norm in the league, both wide receivers would line up on the outside, hence the name wide receiver. But now, teams will add a third receiver into the formation, who lines up in between the offensive line and the other receiver. And this guy is known as the slot receiver. Cup has been labeled as a slot receiver, and even though this is where he aligns most often, I don't think that this is really an accurate label. According to Pro Football Focus, Cup lines up in the slot on about two-thirds of his snaps, but by definition, the slot includes all the space between the outside receiver and the offensive line. The Rams actually attach Cup to the offensive line quite often depending on the situation, and I don't have exact numbers, but I'd estimate that Cup aligns here about 20% of the time, and possibly even more in the second half of the season after Robert Woods left due to injury. Even though he doesn't have his hand in the dirt like a traditional Y tight end, Cup assumes a tight end's responsibilities on a significant portion of his snaps, so he really plays three different positions, outside receiver, slot receiver, and tight end, with a little bit of running back mixed in too. And each of these positions requires a different approach, yet Cup has proven that he can dominate from any alignment. Cup's most impressive trait is his route running, but he isn't a great route runner in the way that, say, Stefan Diggs or Keenan Allen are. He can absolutely separate against man coverage, but his approach to route running is much more reactionary than most receivers. Cup is often adjusting his routes based on a coverage or technique that he recognizes either pre- or post-snap. On this play from back in week 14, LA is running a post-dig concept off of wide zone action, which is designed to put the deep safety, Jalen Thompson, in a bind. Typically, Matt Stafford would key time Thompson and throw to whichever receiver he leaves open. So if Thompson bites on the dig from Odell Beckham, Stafford would look to Cup. And if Thompson sits in the deep middle, Stafford would look to Beckham. But because Cup's route was so good, the safety didn't matter at all. Pre-snap, Cup identified the outside leverage from Cardinals slot corner Byron Murphy, so he attacked Murphy with an inside stem. Once Cup established inside leverage, he leaned on Murphy to the outside in an effort to influence Thompson. Then once Thompson flipped his hips, Cup broke to the outside and left him covering nothing. Here, Cup used leverage and explosiveness to separate vertically against man coverage, but defenses don't call man coverage all that much against the Rams for a variety of reasons. So, Cup is often asked to separate against zone coverage, which requires a much different approach. On this play from back in week 8, Houston is in a double high safety shell, and post-snap, those safeties will expand toward the sidelines in a cover 2 zone look. Cup is aligned as the number one receiver on the bottom of your screen, and the Rams called a drive concept designed to high-low the middle linebacker responsible for the middle hook. Now, I want you to watch how Cup runs this underneath in route. He knew that Houston was in cover two, and he knew that the middle linebacker would pick up the dig route from Van Jefferson. But for that space to open underneath, the Sam linebacker needed time to expand, so Cup delayed his break. It doesn't look like much, but in this case, it was the difference between a wide open completion over the middle and a tough throw into a tight window. Cup is explosive enough to shake defenders in man coverage and aware enough to find holes or blind spots in zone coverage, but receiving only makes up half of his game. 
Historically, Sean McVay's offense has not been a place where receivers produce record-breaking numbers, even going back to his time as offensive coordinator in Washington. But this doesn't mean that McVay puts less value into receivers, he just values them differently. McVay likes to condense his formations, meaning he often aligns his receivers in reduced splits. This limits what the defense can do coverage-wise, but it requires receivers to get more involved in the run game. And this is an area of Cup's game that gets totally overlooked. The reason why McVay puts Cup at tight end so often is because he is a phenomenal run blocker on both zone and gap scheme runs. Take a look at this play from back in week 5 against Seattle. LA is running a variation of counter lead, which tells the offensive line to open up the play side B gap, and Cup to pull from the backside and lead block. Post-snap, Cup cracked Seahawks safety Jamal Adams, which allowed Daryl Henderson to break free for a 30-yard gain. Say what you want about Adams, but he's a very good run defender. Cup just happens to be one of the best blocking receivers in the league. Sean McVay comes from the Shanahan coaching tree, and the Shanahan-style offense is heavily reliant on the zone run game. McVay's offense is no exception to this fact, but most Shanahan-style offenses in the league bring in heavier personnel packages to run the ball, while McVay does the opposite. The Rams use 11 personnel a league-high 84% of the time, and three receiver sets like 11 personnel force defenses to match with nickel personnel or five defensive backs, so that they don't end up with a linebacker covering a receiver. So when the Rams put three receivers on the field, defenses will almost always match with nickel, but they run into issues when Cup lines up right next to the offensive line. The Rams were third in the NFL in rushing success rate from 11 personnel, and part of that is due to good offensive line play, but Cup's ability as a blocker played a role as well. Having a player like Cup who can align just about anywhere also does wonders for an offense schematically because aligning players out of position can help with coverage identification. Here, the Rams are in a 3 by 2 set with the tight end, Tyler Higby split out wide, and Cup in the backfield. The defender lined up over Higby on the outside is a linebacker, and the defender lined up over Cup is a defensive back, which gives away the Lions' man coverage call. Because Cup aligned in the backfield, the defensive back responsible for him was forced to move into the box, while the linebacker, who would usually be in the box, moved outside to account for Higby. This told Matt Stafford all he needed to know, because Cup was running an option route, where he has the option to either break inside, break outside, or continue vertically, based on the defender's leverage. Post-snap, Lions cornerback Jerry Jacobs was leveraged inside, so Cup broke outside and picked up an 11-yard gain. Even though Cup outproduced every other receiver in the league this year by a long shot, there isn't a single quality that separates him from his peers. It's the combination of everything. Versatility. That's what makes Cup as great as he is. It's almost a disservice to call him a slot receiver, because that only makes up a small part of his game. He can play the slot, he can play out wide, he can line up attached to the offensive line, or even in the backfield. He can separate against man-to-man -man underneath and over the top, he can read and adjust his routes to find space against zone coverage, and he can block as well as any other receiver in the NFL. He isn't the prototypical receiver that most teams look for, but in a way, that's why he's so difficult to contain. Teams don't see another receiver this versatile, so they often aren't prepared when he's blocking like a tight end and burning any defensive back who tries to cover him. Sean McVay has made a receiver the focal point of his offense for the first time in his play-calling career, and with the help of Matt Stafford, of course, that has brought the Rams' offense back. But that's going to do it for this week's video. My Twitter, Patreon, TikTok, all that stuff is linked in the description, so check those out if you'd like to support the channel. And I'll be back next week with something playoff related. So until then, later.